For much of the 20th century, the textile workers of America prided themselves on producing high quality fabrics in mills across the country. Crafted with pride in the USA wasn't just a marketing slogan. It was a way of life that helped build the American middle class. Made in the USA fabrics were shipped across the country and around the world, helping to drive a burgeoning economy. This drive to produce came at a price though. The chemicals required to process and finish textiles, as well as waste products, were sometimes handled and disposed of improperly, leaving a legacy of pollution. Just outside of Greenville, South Carolina, the U.S. Finishing Cone Mills Textile Facility once was the hub of the surrounding community. Today, the site poses a potential environmental threat to neighbors. Modern Greenville is a thriving global commerce hub. But for close to 100 years, the city was known as the Textile Center of the South. The Union Bleaching and Finishing Company, originally built in 1902, was the second oldest custom finishing plant in the region. The facility changed hands and names numerous times over the next 100 plus years, until 1984, when American Fast Print purchased the property. A catastrophic fire eventually forced the company into bankruptcy. In 2003, a fire destroyed a large portion of the facility that you see here behind me. And when it did, it exposed a lot of residual chemicals left over from the old textile mill, in addition to a lot of asbestos and asbestos-wrapped pipe. As a result of that fire and subsequent collapse of the building, we've had the potential for release of the asbestos, and that's what triggered my group's interest in the response. The biggest reason that we're out here is under the facility, there's a groundwater plume that has pretty high levels of chromium, and the groundwater is discharging to a creek called Langston Creek, which then discharges into the Reedy River, which is a priority one watershed. Some other areas of the site had PCBs. The Northern Reservoir it was drained several years ago because at one point there were high levels of PCB in the water and in the fish that were in the pond. And then it was also discharging into Langston Creek and spreading more contamination. The uncontrolled presence of asbestos warranted a time critical removal action by EPA to demolish the buildings and remove the asbestos piping. The demolition process involves two primary steps. One is the actual collapse of the building itself, and two is the segregation of the materials. Managing the asbestos material is probably the biggest challenge that we are facing today. It tends to be friable upon contact, and for that reason, we have to take special precaution. We use a water curtain, which is a, a series of spray heads to help attenuate the dust released during the removal. We are currently using two large excavators with a hydraulic shear attached to one of them and a grappler type device attached to the other. The shear will come in and shear off sections of the asbestos wrapped pipe while the grappler will then manipulate the piece of pipe and take it over to a separate staging area where the asbestos pipe is double wrapped and taped for transportation and disposal at a licensed landfill. As much as we can, we are recycling scrap iron, steel, and also brick and concrete. Perimeter air monitoring guarantees site workers and the community are protected during demolition activities. The Perimeter monitoring consists of four stations located around the periphery of the site. The idea was to have each monitoring unit intercept the air pathway between the actual demolition work and the adjacent community itself. Now the individual units 
run 24 seven. And the data from those units are uploaded to a satellite link and in turn transferred to the website for this site. EPA's Environmental Response Team's Viper Wireless Network-Based Communication System enables real-time transmission of air monitoring data to a server that also provides data management, analysis, and visualization. This information is also available to the public via the EPA U.S. Finishing Cone Mills website, along with real-time webcam images and other important maps, documents, and data. The production of this mill does not stop with cloth. Perhaps its most important product is this, a comfortable American home. The mill is literally the focal point for the entire community. Life revolves around it. The site has a long-standing history with the community. There is a neighborhood that was the old mill village where all the workers at the factory live. There's still a few remaining residents that actually did work in the original cone mills back in the 19, you know, early 1900s. Concurrent with the time-critical removal of the asbestos threat, EPA is performing a remedial investigation to assess other potential ecological threats at the site. Yeah, we're gonna do one more. We have about 15 different areas of concern that we're gonna be investigating over the next year. There's the main facility, then there's outlying areas. And in Langston Creek and Reedy River, we'll be doing sediment analysis, surface water analysis, in an area off-site called the Reedy River Floodplain Disposal Area is an old dump area that will be doing surface and subsurface soil sampling there. In the aeration lagoon that was used to treat wastewater for the facility, we've taken surface water samples in there and we're also sampling the sludge that's at the bottom. Uh, once we get on site, we will be implementing groundwater investigations. We know there's a groundwater plume on the site. To assess possible contaminants at the northern reservoir, teams perform surface and subsurface sediment sampling. If results are above acceptable thresholds, then a remedial action feasibility study will be required. In January, we'll be coming back and investigating another area called the sludge disposal area near the Reedy River to see what was in that sludge and if it's a problem. Long-term plans call for reclaiming the land as a mixed-use residential, commercial, and recreational property. There's a very big interest in the Rails to Trails Swamp Rabbit Trail goes by the site. A group wants to extend that trail around the site to connect to another Rails to Trails. There's a lot of interest in reusing the site once we get it cleaned up. And so I think once we get the facility that's burned and crumbling, we take that down, clean that up, and then begin to clean up the actual environment around it. It'll provide a boost for the morale of the neighborhood. And I think we'll, we'll end up being a good thing. In textiles, as in all of our industries, the race to compete has led as it inevitably must to better mills, better methods, better men, and eventually to a better way of life. The textile industry of yesterday was the backbone of this once proud village. And today, with the revitalization of the Cone Mill property, the future is bright. <laughs>